What's up guys, Jimmy Chang here with Andrew and welcome back to Freshly Charged where we review personal electric vehicles like this brand new electric cargo bike by Electric Bikes. This bike promises not only to carry cargo, it will also crush hills. Andrew, what do we have to expect? We've got the Electric Expedition here. It supposedly can hold two people on there, many bags, and like Jimmy said, crush any hill in its way. We're gonna get this unboxed, set up, so we can take it for a ride and tell you what we love about it, what we hate about it, and who we think should get this bike. Just like on some of the other electric bikes that we've unboxed, you can see it comes with plenty of warning labels. Like with all electric e-bikes, their bikes come pretty much all assembled. Very little assembly needed. Just take off the packaging, read through the warning labels if you'd like. You're pretty much ready to go. Coming to the charger, this is a bigger box than we've seen on the previous electric bikes. So I wonder if there's two chargers or some type of split charger in here. Nope, it's the same size charging box and then comes with some pedals in here. So that's why this box is bigger. This charger is a 54.6 volt two amp charger. It is 28 amp hours. It should take you 14 hours to charge them empty to full. One battery will take seven hours and then the second battery will take an additional seven hours. And it doesn't look like there's any type of splitter so you're gonna have to charge them one at a time. These pedals look like they just pop into place. Oh, that was really cool. No twisting at all. So easy to remove, easy to pop on. All right, so we're gonna pump up these tires, 25 to 45, and the trick that we learned on one of our other electric bikes was to not pump it up too fast. We gotta pump it up slowly so everything seats correctly. All right, I put my nozzle on here to pump it up, and you got see some goop that came out? That is to help prevent punctures and flats. This frame came in great condition. I don't see one nick on here or one paint mishap. So I was pretty impressed for coming in such a big box that it didn't get destroyed. And there were some punctures in that box as well, so this thing did pretty well in shipping. The box did take some damage, but the bike is basically in perfect condition. I didn't see anything wrong yeah, with it. I didn't see anything. So we've got it all set up, and uh, we've pretty much unpackaged it except for the warning labels. Do not exceed the maximum payload on the rear rack. Seat post tag warning. Always wear a helmet. Well, Jimmy Chang says, always wear protection. Be sure the front wheel and handlebar stem are secure. Front wheel tag warning. Got to be 18 years or older to ride this. Ooh, oh, yeah. didn't know that one. And let's learn about this <laughs> electric expedition. Let's turn this bad boy on. Batteries will go into sleep mode after 48 hours of inactivity. So if you do notice that when you press the power button, it doesn't turn on. You just have to press the button on the batteries and it should light right up. Starting with the cockpit on the right side, you have a twist throttle. The throttle does not work in pedal assist zero. You have to be in pedal assist one through five. This is a class three bike where you can get it up to 28 miles per hour, but we'll see when we go for a ride. You have a Shimano thumb shifter on the right, zoom hydraulic brake levers, control module on the left side. This is something that I've never seen before on any type of other e-bike. It has a two-way adjustment where you can, if you need to make this more compact, you slide this up, this little switch up. You can pull this lever. Now you can rotate the handlebars and you can also rotate the stem back or forward. So you can do kind of a forward mount or you can bring it up, whatever you prefer, which is really neat. And it's not just to make it more compact, it's to adjust it for ergonomics so that it's more comfortable when you ride. You have this neck that is foldable. You can bring that down if you need to make this more compact. Four mounts for a basket in the front. Metal fenders, I do love that. A 20 by three inch street tire not an off-road knobby tire like the Electric XP 3.0. I like that they made it a street tire because when you're holding cargo, there's no reason to be riding it off-road. 180 millimeter brake disc with Zoom hydraulic calipers. They're two piston hydraulic brake calipers. This is the first electric e-bike we've seen without a battery inside the compartment. So no battery in here. Three mounts for a water bottle holder or any other type of accessories like a lock. Pedals we've never seen before where they pop right off and on. 48 volt, 14 amp hour batteries, two of them. So 28 amp hours combined. Adjustable seat, which looks like there's two adjustable seat heights. That is interesting. I've never seen that before. Whoa, you can go mega high on this thing. Moving to the rack, this thing is massive. This is the biggest rack we've ever seen on an e-bike. It's got eight bolts, so you can attach all sorts of different types of accessories on here. They did send us a seat and we'll put that on here. They also have a cooler box, 
travel bags. This seems like the perfect bike if you're gonna be doing any type of rideshare delivery service. We have a quick disconnect motor cable on the bottom. This allows for easier tire changes. Plastic guard, so if you have a passenger in the rear, their feet don't get sucked into the chain or the tires or the spokes. Shimano Tourney Derailleur with the seven speed. And then this motor in the rear, they've upgraded it so it can crush any hill that's put in its way. The kickstand is a stand-up kickstand. It goes straight forward to get it off the kickstand. And to get it on the kickstand, you just lift up on there. If you're gearing this up with all your packages, you want your bike upright because you can imagine if your bike's leaning on that single kickstand and you're loading it up with a ton of gear, it could easily fall over. This is a much more steady way to do it. They made this very balanced, more compact compared to a lot of the cargo e-bikes, and they've made this frame ultra strong so it doesn't have some weird instability issues like we've seen on other e-bikes. If you want extra long padding for multiple seats, you can do two pads for your butt. But if you only have one person using the seat, then you can have the padding for the butt and for the back like we've set up here. Very impressive, all the different attachments, all the different accessories. You can add seats, seat cushions, you can add storage for food delivery, coolers. This is quite remarkable what they've done. So we're gonna take the expedition out right now, and then while we're riding, we're gonna tell you what we hate about it, what we love about it, and who we think should get this bike. All right, we are going up this hill. Andrew, how is it handling this? And it's flying up the hill. It's going 18 miles per hour and I'm barely putting any effort into it. This thing's got a lot of power. I'm very surprised for a cargo bike. We're going up a hill and into the wind right now. I can feel all the wind resistance. Yeah, and, and I've uh, got no hands. So we made it up the hill. Very impressive for such a large bike. All right, let's go over the things that we like about this bike. What do you love best, Andrew? I love all accessories that you can get for this bike and the hauling power, this thing cruises up hills. The other things is it comes with one battery or two batteries. For two batteries at $16.99 or one battery at $13.99, this is one of the most affordable cargo e-bikes we've ever reviewed. The frame on this bike is designed extremely well. A lot of the cargo bikes we've ridden in the past, they feel like they're two different pieces. This is one singular frame. I love the capacity that this can carry. The fact that you can take two passengers, possibly even three, and then the weight capacity up to 400 plus pounds, and then the back, 300 pounds. This thing is a beast. This can carry so much gear, so many people. This definitely could replace a car if you live in an urban setting. <laughs> Man, I'm white knuckling this thing. <laughs> I think the scariest part is not being able to see where we're going. I'm having to put like all my faith into Andrew that he's going to make the right choice while riding this thing because I'll show you my perspective of what I see. This is what I see when we're riding. Especially when we're going fast and downhill, you can see why uh, I, I feel a little trepidation with Andrew at the helm. I love that it has hydraulic brakes because we're seeing a lot of these cargo e-bikes come with mechanical disc brakes, which doesn't really make any sense to me. They've done a great job with the cable management and as always, metal fender. The stem, I can't believe how quickly I can bring this forward, bring it towards me, rotate the handlebars. This thing is pretty sweet. And that's pretty darn handy. I actually used it while riding around with my wife. It just didn't feel quite right while I was on it. So I just did undid the clip, made some adjustments, and uh, got it going and it was pretty amazing. Is that better? The foot placement on this e-bike for their passenger, really nice. They're not just pegs, they're actually platforms that can pop in and out really quick with just quick release mechanism. So very nice feature. Oh, and the biggest thing is the power. The power on this motor is incredible for being a cargo e-bike. This thing surpasses regular e-bikes. The fact that you can go up hills with the passenger, 20 to 28 miles per hour. A lot of these bikes get slowed down to a crawl when you're going up big hills. And it's not just the power, but it's the delivery of the power. It's very responsive. We knock on cadence sensors just because a lot of times there's a delay. Not so much with this bike. They've done a really good job tuning this bike. Very responsive. The delay is, is actually quite minimal. So I'm gonna start pedaling and see how long it takes for the motor to kick in here. Oh, yeah. It's almost instantaneous. Oh, it's pretty cool. Oh. No oh, yeah. suspension though, so watch out for money. It's pretty quick, the motor turning on. It's like a quarter turn. So a quarter turn of the pedals and that cadence sensor turns right on. And then as soon as I stop pedaling, yeah, it's, it, it, it stopped almost immediately. 
So yeah. very responsive camp sensor. I think the bike really well thought out in terms of what you get for the price. At our next stop, we're gonna talk about the things that we don't like about this bike. I like that this bike is nice and long because when you go to power brake it, it doesn't feel like you're gonna go over the handlebars. All right, Andrew's gonna see how fast you can get it and how fast you can stop it. 32, I got it up to 34 miles per hour on the display. Really quick and my eyes are watering. So pretty decent for a cargo e-bike. All right, the camera never shows it, but this is a pretty steep hill and Andrew's coming up and we'll see how fast he can go with pedal assist and with him assisting it. Look at him go. At the beginning of the hill, I was crushing it at 31 miles per hour. When I got to the end of the hill where the steepest part was, I was at 24, 25 miles per hour. Some things I don't like about this bike is they use a Shimano turning derailleur. I wish they would use a little bit higher quality derailleur on this bike. There's two sets of keys for the batteries. I wish they would have just matched them up so you don't have to carry two different sets if you're ever gonna be removing the batteries in and out. The reason why that gets confusing is, so you have two separate batteries and you have two separate sets of keys. The keys are not universal. So at least for me, that's just more stuff to lose. I wish Electric started using colored displays. The lights that come on this bike stock, at least you have a front and back light, but they're not very bright. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of night riding, you do wanna to upgrade to their bigger lights or a handlebar light. And then the fact that it doesn't have suspension, I do wish that it came with suspension seat post. The seat that it does come with, it's nice, but you can get a seat with actual suspension built in that can help make those longer rides more enjoyable. We're gonna keep riding, and while we ride, we're gonna talk about who we think should get this bike. If you're doing food delivery, this is the perfect e-bike to hold a ton of cargo. And for me, if you're a family man or a woman, this is a great bike to carry extra passengers, especially little kids if you need to take them to school. So great all around cargo e-bike, which I will dub the minivan of e-bikes. Thanks for watching and when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.